I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Vivian Hudson. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? Wonderful. Well, it's Halloween here, so I've just come back from trick and treating with my kids. So they've got all the loot, and I've just got to um, deal with the with the fallout from that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can imagine the sugar rush at your house. Yes, yes. I'm um, hope, hoping that's not going to be too much tonight, but it could be after school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Hey, Vivian, it's a great pleasure to connect with you one more time. Hey, thanks for being here. Uh, what part? of the world are you in right now? Well, I might sound like I'm from Australia, which I am, but I now live in South Carolina. I moved here about four years ago. Oh, that's good. That's good. And, mm-hmm. and tell me, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting? So you, I got a message from you through LinkedIn and you were looking to interview podcasters. So I guess you fi- found my name. I've been co-hosting a medical ancillary sales podcast for what I guess is almost two years now. So I think we've done, I want to say close to 150 episodes or something. We started with two a week and now we've dropped down to one a week because it was just getting hard to think of content. But that's been a lot of fun doing that over the over the years. We've started recently started a doctor podcast and I'm also about to launch a leadership podcast as well. So I'm going a little bit podcast crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, that is great. It's good to know that you're doing it that way. I did get the opportunity to listen to the Medical Ancillary Sales podcast. That was amazing stuff. Like I really enjoyed it. I think it's it's seals uh uh, sales information that's applicable not only to the medical professional salesperson, but also to anyone that's selling. It's principles you, you all are sharing there, isn't it? Yes. Well, some of it is product content and some of it is about closing sales, finding leads, uh, staying motivated, especially for there's a lot of uh, freelance workers, freelance salespeople out there. And it's it's pretty tough being in sales and self-motivating yourself. So our podcast is kind of there to help people stay motivated and to really uh, learn as they go. And, and the great thing is if you're a rep and you're driving up to your next medical sales office meeting you can actually just listen to the podcast and freshen up on some of that content before you go in so you go in motivated love the idea love the idea so who did you learn this skill from uh, you could talk of any which one, if be it the sales or even uh, the podcasting skills. Well, back, oh, it depends on how far we want to go back. <laughs> but in my in my career in Australia, I was a pharmacist for many many years, and when I relocated to the US, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do, but I thought sales would be a good place to go, and I started working with a medical ancillary company and I'm with a different company now, but the CEO of that company, uh, we both talked and decided that doing a podcast for the sales reps out there would be a good idea. So we kind of just used our experience through our years of being Mm -hmm. out in the sales force and just through life, I guess. And, and that's really helped us to form the foundation of that particular podcast. Hmm. How wonderful is that? Uh, no, you're you're doing podcasts left, right, and center, right? My question, <laughs> <laughs> my question is, my question is, why will you continue to repeat that skill? Well, what we've found with the medical sales podcast is it's actually attracted people to our business, and I don't even know exactly how they find our podcast. I think. It's a little bit of rumour. Some people have heard it and they tell other people about it. We do distribute it through our network. And the the reason that it is a great thing to do and to repeat is because it's a great thing. It's easy for people to listen to. We try to keep them short, like 10 to 15 minutes tops. So it's something easy for people to listen to if if they're going to the gym on a short drive or anything like that. So it's a great marketing tool and the way we do them, we try to just be very off the cuff so it really feels authentic as well. Yeah. 
my wife just told me she's starting the gym again. Um, <laughs> I, I hope she gets in some podcast as well while she's doing that. But yeah, the gym definitely helps with the podcast while you're working as well. It's really, really great information. Again, hey, tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. Well, I have had the fortune of really having a lot of flexibility over my time in a big part of my working life through the years. And one of the things that I really think has helped me is adding structure to the freedom that I've had. And you might go, well, structure and freedom, they don't really match. But if you actually think about freedom, uh, if, if you just didn't add any structure to your time, then chaos can reign, right? Mm, exactly. <laughs> so if we add a level of structure, it in turn actually gives you freedom. So if you stop your brain having to make a decision every minute at through the day and that's exaggerating every minute's not exactly right but every 20 30 minutes about well what am I going to do now it actually is quite draining to your brain power and actually makes you feel perhaps less creative so adding a layer of structure it kind of takes some of that guesswork and gives you that feeling of of discipline and security that you you kind of get when you add that that layer of structure to it yeah i love it i'll definitely add to that as well and say i think it's every minute now actually instead of every 30 (laughs) minutes Um, well yeah especially with phones that we have those notifications going off and i've read somewhere the other day i think the average person checks their phone like 150 times a day Hmm. which over the course of a year is like 38 days out of your life or something crazy (laughs) ouchie Yeah, especially when it's especially when the truth is we went from zero to that number, right? It's like exactly. it's it's a huge mm-hmm. jump. It's it's a huge jump. Um, yeah. So how does it make you feel, Vivian, putting these layers in place and adding this extra freedom, if you would, freedom in your thoughts, freedom in your processes? Well, structure is like discipline is to kids, and it gives you that sense of security and a sense of comfort. So by adding some structure to my day and in my approach to what I do, it gives me a lot more, um, a lot more of a feeling of satisfaction when I stick to those plans than if I just went from minute to minute or to every 10 minutes to every 10 minutes, what should I do now? So it helps me stay on task. Uh, One of the things that I do, I I did notice, like I'd kind of, I've been a very good exerciser through the years and I actually have a treadmill in my office and I was really good for a long, long time. I would get up in the morning, I would get on my treadmill, I'd get my exercise done and and that was a level of structure, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, lately I've been taking my kids to school because they have to get on the school bus at some ridiculous hour. So I started doing that. And by the time I got home, I'd kind of think, well, I'll just do some work first and I'll just do a couple of other things and I'll go on my treadmill later. Mm -hmm. And it was just all completely falling apart. So this very morning, actually, I realized like I knew that I had to add some structure back to what I was doing to help me get back on task. So I actually went to join the gym this morning. So now what I'm going to do is when I drop the kids at school, I'm going to go to the gym straight after that. And that way I don't have to have that conversation with myself, which I do for the rest of the day yeah. if I don't get up and get on the <laughs> get on the treadmill. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, that's it's fascinating how things connect. Like um, I could go on and on and blow off and say, wow, wow, it's so amazing. But I'm really, I'm really in flow then with how things connect because uh, my wife did that this morning as well, right? And she said she'll join tomorrow instead of paying from today because it's the 1st of November, right? Uh, mm-hmm. We're recording this on the 31st. It's Halloween, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So it's really intriguing, right? Like, what are the chances, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that would happen, right? Uh, but funny. it speaks as well very much to the adding that layer of order that has definitely helped with freedom on her behalf. So she's actually... 
um, a registered nurse that, well, she's an author that she's full time and she writes poems that simplifies health disorders. But it's the, the that added layer that has definitely helped her. So I really love what you're promoting, love what you're living and showing by action, Vivian. Uh, well done. Well, amazing. You're welcome. Amazing audience. We are live with Vivian Hudson. Oh, she is doing so many things. Uh, the one thing I would definitely speak about is the podcast, right? Medical and Ancillary Sales Podcast. Do check that out. And uh, where's the best place for someone to connect with you, Vivian? Uh, you can find me in lots of different places. Uh, I do have, uh, I, I'm on LinkedIn and it's Vivian Hudson. That's V-I-V-I-E for Egg and Finelli Hudson. So you can find me on there. I also have a website. It's www.brainbodyandbusiness.com. I do some self-leadership work and, and really help people understand their concept of mental wealth. That's probably room for a whole nother podcast there. <laughs> <laughs> And then you can find me on Twitter at Viv Hudson One and also on Facebook, either under my name or under my business, Brain, Body and Business as well. So um, I'm I'm around everywhere. Yeah, she is. <laughs> and she then is. look for my podcasts. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Well, let's switch gears for a moment now, Viviana, and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Viviana. I'm coming <laughs> over there. <laughs> what is your earliest childhood memory? You know, that was an interesting question is uh, if I have to think back, like I grew up the first few years of my life in a very small country town in Australia. And if I go back to those days, I really remember that sense of freedom that I had. So even as a, as a young child back then, and my brother and I, who he was just a year older than me, we would ride our bikes around this fairly small town. And it seemed like we just rode such a long way each time we rode. But probably, I mean, if I went back and looked at the distance, it was probably like four blocks or something like that. But, you know, when you're a kid, it seems like yeah, miles. Huge. Yeah, yeah. So, you're, so you're riding this bike. How old do you think you were? Um, I, I want to say, well, I knew that we lived there from the time I was probably 18 months to about six years old. So I'd have to say it's got to be somewhere between the ages of three and six. All right, all right. Why do you think this memory is so clear? Uh, I, I guess, like... Our, our memories are very much connected to our emotions and I just remember feeling really happy in this time and and having that that feeling now that I value I understand that I value freedom it's probably my highest value out of all the things that I think about uh, that that it really connects to me because of that so um, so I think that that's why it's cemented that happy feeling with freedom in my mind yeah from way back then it's cool <laughs> well can i offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind yeah i just love the idea like so one of the things that is coming up often is people sharing memories with bicycles right where they're riding their bikes and it's i think a bike is a really amazing invention because the balance that is required in that is phenomenal right both for the person that's riding it and um, the brain if you would the brain action that's going on it's a really phenomenal tool for children coordination and i could go on but the thing that came to me when you were speaking is just two things one being how you were mind mapping if you would through the blocks right um, in mm -hmm. the city and the fact that in order to have freedom and really enjoy it you have to be able to take action in it so it's like I could be free and just wander around, right? But right. the action part of it, like riding through, uh, the action that's required, the fitness, if you would, it's just yeah. amazing. So that you're doing that now, like you're joining the gym again because the action, <laughs> the action in the freedom is really um, necessary, if you would. So that's my my take. Okay, I'll I'll take that. I, I like that. <laughs> so there we go. There we go. If we fast forward to when you were twelve years old, what was your favorite song? Well, I I've got to say I remember getting the single "Ebony Eyes" by Jack Welch, and I guess it just had this. And I'm not going to sing it for you because I can't sing. I'd scare all your listeners away. <laughs> but it just had this tune that really stuck in my my mind. 
And I guess I went to school and talked about it. So when I had my birthday party, I actually got the Ebony Eyes single because back then we used like those little record things, you know, the black discs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that was the first first piece of music I actually owned, and I guess that that's why that sticks in my mind. I've never heard that song. I definitely look for it if I can yeah. find it. Right, like I am seeing "Ebony I'm Eyes" by Bob lunch. Welch. I'm seeing it by oh, Bob Welch. Oh, that's it. It's Bob Welch. It's Bob. My, okay. Yeah, oh, it's right. Bob. That was my mistake. And that's cool. Jack Welch is the entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. He definitely popped up as well, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, so I love you mix the entrepreneurship with the with the talent, the musician. That's pretty cool. It's okay. <laughs> All right, my friend. Well, well, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Vivian, are you ready? Okay. Vivian, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Well, my kids have to be the obvious target. Uh, I have lots of little sayings that I say to my kids that hopefully they'll take forward with them when, as, as they grow up and hopefully have their own kids, like things like it's not what you say, it's what you do. I have them think about if something bad happens, well, uh, what can you change about it? And if you can't change it, then it's better to change how you look at it rather than trying to make that bad circumstance change. So my kids are one, but I also do like to public speak when I get the opportunity or on podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and that enables me to send some of the messages that I've learned through the years. I, I did some coach training and stuff and, and I do a lot of self-reflection and I think that that's really helped me to learn so much and empower me in my own life. And I'd like to pass that on to people that I meet or uh, through the audiences that are willing to listen to me. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Are you married? Yes, I've been married for 23 years. And prior to that, we actually went out for seven years. So wow. it's been a pretty, pretty long time. <laughs> yeah, it's like over three decades. Like it sounds really great when you say it like that. Like I've been married for over a decade now instead of 10 years right, <laughs> right. it sounds right. really big right it sounds right. yeah so right. you've been together for over three decades now right oh, that sounds great well done viviana hey do you have children yes you said three right yes uh, i've got three kids i've got an 11 year old daughter a 13 year old son and a 16 year old daughter wow do you believe in god uh i believe in like an energy but I wouldn't call it a god as such. So I think that there's something out there, but I just don't know uh, exactly what I would call it. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I do have friends and I have different kinds of friends, ones that feed me in like different ways. So I have this best friend in Australia and she is awesome because she really keeps me real. So if I'm ever going off on a tangent or something like that, she'll kind of be that person that will give me that virtual slap in the face <laughs> to keep me real. And then there's the other people that you just like to hang out with because they have they, – they, they make you laugh and they're just fun to be with. And then there's others that help me to stretch personally and professionally. So I've got different kinds of friends. Hmm. What about TV? Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Oh, never, never. Hmm. How about three hours a week? It would be, yeah, three hours a week. Well, Vivian, after 1,001 conversations in three months, uh, in 2016, uh I came up with a workbook and the name of it is called yours. It stands for your own unique real self. And um, the idea is as you answer those questions, you uncover your mission, your own unique real statement. If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Vivian Hudson, what would you say that is? Well, I was pretty torn with this question because it was two really strong ones. But I think for me, and, and this has been a huge motivator for me is to to really push my push myself and hopefully encourage others to do so and that is live life outside your comfort zone because one day you'll wish you had so it's those things that we don't do that we tend to regret more than the things that we did do even if we did do them and fail mm, love it 
Vivian Hudson, this was a great pleasure. Definitely more than 12 minutes, but hey, I really had the time. <laughs> you know, it's Halloween night in America. Um, you're one of the two conversations I have had tonight. It was really fun having you. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Yes, there was the other statement that I thought of uh, many, many years ago and I kind of remind myself of this uh, upon occasions is always do what you believe in and believe in what you do. So whatever you do out there, whatever job you have, make sure that you believe in it because it'll, it'll come back to you in so many ways. Love it. Vivian Hudson, again, great pleasure. Thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Uh, thank you, Angel, for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com. Dot com.